like to say a, a special thank you to uh, Willie Rennie and uh, Myrtle Fraser uh, who are with us uh, here tonight. Uh, my name is Nina Monday, I'm the Chief Executive of Five Centre for Equalities. Uh, we have organised this meeting especially uh, uh, to help people to understand about the changes regarding the uh, vaccine certificate and, uh, and also with the recent changes about the uh, the boosters, Jack, and I think it's, it's quite good to have two MSPs with us this evening uh, just to kind of reiterate or explain better about the government messages. So maybe can I first introduce uh, Myrtle? Thank, th th thank you Nina and uh, thank you for um, inviting me along. Uh, just very briefly I want to start by reiterating the importance of people getting vaccinated. Uh, we know that COVID is a really serious illness. Um, we are facing an even more serious situation now with the Omicron variant, which is much more transmissible than the previous variants. And we know that uh, a large percentage of the population will end up catching Omicron and a percentage of those will end up uh, quite seriously ill. Some will be in hospital and sadly some people will die. Um, and the best protection against Omicron is to get vaccinated and in particular, uh, if you already had the two vaccines, to get a booster and the, the the NHS and the Scottish Government are doing a lot of work to make available between now and the end of the year uh, more uh, spaces for people to get the booster vaccine and I know there are some people who are uh, hesitant about getting uh, vaccinated um, but all the uh, evidence we have all the scientific and medical evidence we have shows that the vaccines are safe and they are far far uh, safer than the alternative, which is to run the risk of catching what could be a, a really serious or fatal illness. So I really want to just encourage everyone, if you've not been vaccinated, please take up the opportunity because it's really important. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Bully. Um, yeah, Murdo's absolutely right. Um, you know, th there are some people who are hesitant, partly because they think you know, these vaccines have been created in a super fast fashion, and they have been, but the way of creating vaccines has changed, and it means we can move super fast in in response to emergencies like this. And so therefore people shouldn't hesitate. They should get uh, a vaccine because it doesn't just protect them, but it protects their neighbours and their friends and their family. Um, and it doesn't necessarily slow down the spread that much but it just means you won't necessarily end up in hospital, which was the case in the early phase um, of this pandemic. Now, if you caught it and you were in certain groups, you were had a good chance of going to hospital and being very, very ill. So if you get the vaccine, it, it actually means that you're protected. It also means that your, your friends and your neighbours are protected as well. So that's, that's the big lesson just now, is that please, please, however, hesitant you are, please get vaccinated because this Omicron thing is is just running riot through uh, you know our communities. So please do that. Whatever disagreements we've got and everything else, that's the most important thing to remember. Thank you. Um, before this meeting, uh, we were sent uh, a few questions. Uh, would it be OK if I go through the questions one by one and each of you take turn to answer those questions? Yes, OK, so the first one, which studies or research has been used as a basis for these vaccine mandates? I'm not quite sure what they mean by vaccine mandates, because there is no mandate for compulsion to have the vaccine. You're not compelled in any way uh, to do so. There is a debate about vaccine passports and whether that is a form of compulsion, but there's no actual compulsion. Now, Boris Johnson did talk about there needing to be a debate, perhaps, about having some form of vaccine mandate, but I think that's gone quiet very quickly, and I don't think it was ever really a serious proposition, because we've tried to, in this country, work on the basis that we encourage people to do things, because it's the right thing to do, just as Murdo and I have explained, rather than compelling people. As soon as you compel people, people start to doubt about whether it's the right thing to do. So, no, there's no mandate. If they mean vaccine passport mandate, then that's a separate uh, discussion, which I'm sure we'll come to. 
Yeah, I mean, just to agree essentially with what Willie said, um, there is a, a separate debate around vaccine passports. Now, this is this has been quite controversial. Um, and when they were first introduced, um, you had to produce a vaccine uh, passport proof of vaccination to access certain venues like nightclubs or uh, indoor events of more than 500 people or outdoor events of more than 10,000. So if you're attending a large football or rugby match or a large outdoor concert, you have to have proof of vaccination. But about two weeks ago, the Scottish government announced a change in policy. And they said that uh, as an alternative to, to proof of vaccination, you could produce a negative lateral flow test. So I think that's that was a helpful change because it removed some of the concerns people had about having to produce proof of vaccination. Uh, and actually, it's probably a, a better move from the point of view of public health, because if you have a negative test, it means you haven't got COVID. And if you haven't got COVID, you can't pass it on to anyone else. So there has been a bit of a change in policy, and I think that's been a, a step in the right direction. Yeah, uh, Murdo's, Murdo's right about that. And I mean, we are we're still opposed to vaccine passports or ID cards. We, we don't think um, it necessarily um, helps overall. Um, the government are kind of confused a little bit about what the purpose is. Initially, it was to stop the spread and to encourage people to get the vaccine. Then it kind of merged into just being about encouraging people to have the vaccine. You know, and then it's flipped back and forward again. So there is a bit of confusion about the purpose. So we're still opposed to it. But thankfully, the Scottish government seemed to have gone a little bit cold on it because they were planning to expand them um, to more parts of the economy, and that's gone quiet. Um, the UK government have now um, voted this week to bring them in, but I think it's more in line with what Murdo's just set out that the Scottish government are going to do. So it's better than it was, but I mean, we just don't think we need them at all, to be honest. We're, we're better to all get tested and vaccinated to cut down the real risk rather than just being able to prove that you've done so. So the key message is like regular testing. Yeah. To help uh, to stop the spread. Okay, the second question the person would like to know if the passports, or vaccine certificates, were introduced, wouldn't they be discriminatory and go against the Scottish government's claims of being an, an all inclusive nation? And like if the MPs will state clearly how they feel on this subject and how they would vote if given the chance. I think they meant MSPs. Well, we, we we did have a vote on this, and I think both Willie and I voted the same way because we both voted against uh, vaccine passports being uh, introduced at, at that particular time. But of course, the government still went ahead because the SNP and Green parties had a majority in the Scottish Parliament. So, so they they introduced them at that time. Uh, I would I would tend to agree with with the, the questioner. Uh, I do think they are discriminatory. Um, and uh, that's why we voted against. Although it is worth bearing in mind that um, it's only a, quite a limited number of places that uh, vaccine passports would be required. So you don't need a vaccine passport to go to a, a bar or, or a restaurant or to a swimming pool. You know, it was only nightclubs and large indoor venues or large, even larger outdoor venues that applied them. But but yes, I would agree with the question. I think I think it was discriminatory. The way it was introduced. Yeah, I, I've got nothing more to add to what Murdo's just said. He described my position well. Um, so it's, they are discriminatory, and we don't think we should have had them. Um, but uh, thankfully, the government isn't expanding them, and it is limited. So. Okay. Can I just say, um, ask you to clarify? At the moment, um, there's no policy within Scotland to want uh, to to kind of advise. Uh, employers to make sure that their staff are vaccinated. Um, There's no, you know, no. I mean, I think in in I think there was a bit of confusion with England saying that all the care staff must be vaccinated, but currently in Scotland we don't have so, the same policy. So there might be some companies, particularly care home companies, who are saying in order to work for us you need to be vaccinated. And I think there are some, maybe the UK wide companies that are transferring that policy into Scotland. But I don't think the Scottish Government has adopted that approach for 
you know, state care home people or state carers. Um, but um, I think they've adopted the approach of encouraging all their staff to be vaccinated, and the vast bulk of them by far have that. So they've, and this is where the slight contradiction is, they've encouraged those people to get vaccinated, but kind of compelled others um, uh, through the vaccine passport scheme. But no, there is no policy, but there might be some employers who are adopting that approach. Thank you. So the third question, I'm confused as to how discriminating against an individual in the form of a vaccine passport is allowed, considering the people of the UK have the Human Rights Act and the uh, Nuremberg Code. Well, um, I mean, the first thing to say about this is the, the Nuremberg Code no longer applies. It, it was superseded many years ago. So I, I know people on the internet will will quote it, but it's not actually relevant to this debate at all. Um, I, I don't know if there's been any legal challenge to vaccine passports. Um, I'd be quite surprised if there was under the Human Rights Act, if it would be successful, uh, basically because um, the places where you have to use vaccine passports are very limited. And in any event, now that the Scottish Government has changed its policy and allowed a negative test um, instead of a passport, I don't think a legal challenge would be successful. So I think I, I, I understand people's concerns around human rights, but I think they're probably um, overstated. And, and we have been using a form of I mean, for, for yellow fever, you've required to have um, certification to be able to travel to certain countries. So and that's been long established that that's permitted. What we are arguing here is that we shouldn't go further and make that necessary for access to what would otherwise be considered as you know, daily common services. We just think it should be very limited and narrow in specific circumstances, like the yellow fever approach, which is probably proportionate, but it's not black and white. Um, you know, it's not as if you either have these or you don't. It, it's, there are circumstances where it's necessary, but we are we are saying that going further for common daily services is a is a retrograde step. Um, this is probably my additional question as well. Are there any kind of circumstances where as we Scotland would have no control over? Uh, because, for example, if um, a country insists that, you know, uh, people cannot travel to the country uh, without a, a, a vaccine certificate. Yeah, we, we can't. That, that's not government. something we, Scottish we government can. Yeah, we, we can't compel other countries to change their laws. We can encourage them, but you know, if they say you're not getting in here until you've done such and such, then you won't get in. Um, and, you know, we can put diplomatic pressure on if it's extreme and ridiculous. Um, you know, we can go through United Nations. You can do all that stuff. But the reality is other countries control their own borders and their own laws. It's sounding yeah. like a Brexiteer now, Murdo. Yeah, well, the, well the, <laughs> the other issue I was going to mention is, of course, there, you know, there are various travel providers who might have their own rules. So it may be, for example, if you're trying to fly to another country, the airline will say you can only come on our plane if you've been vaccinated. And you know they're entitled to do that. They're, they're private companies. And if they decide they're going to do that, then you know that's up to them to make those rules. So people are, who are wanting to travel internationally might face a challenge because of those rules. Okay. And that has nothing to do with policy from the Scottish Government or yeah. from the Scottish Parliament. OK, so I think uh, um, so we're getting now qu questions from kind of the other perspective now. Um, so how do we enforce these uh, in our businesses? I think that's still talking about uh, vaccine certificates. Well, that's that's that, that's that, that's a, a very good question. Um, now, of course, it's worth remembering it's only a very small number of businesses at the moment which have to enforce vaccine passports. So it will only be, uh, you know, for example, a nightclub or perhaps a concert venue or a large football club that would be affected. But they are legally obliged to ensure that people entering the premises 
uh, do have a vaccine certificate or now that they have a negative lateral flow test and they will therefore need to have people uh, staffing the entrance to the premises to check that and they are they are legally obliged to do that and if people uh, try to to uh, get entry without um, a vaccine certificate or a, a negative test then they have to be turned away and uh, I, th I think the other point I think was what happens when people get abusive? Well, sadly, you know, we do know that has happened in some cases. People get abusive. I hope that um, now, you know, we've had this scheme for, for what, two months, that people will get more used to it. But if people are getting abusive, you would have to treat them in the same way as you would treat any other abusive uh, customer and deal with it through security or in, in, the, in the event, call the police to deal with it. But, but it is a legal obligation on the businesses to enforce the rules. And, you know, a lot of these premises are, I don't want to understate this because it's an important point and there will be some people who are very angry about this and would on principle agree to it. But a lot of these businesses, you know, are accustomed to dealing with, you know, the public and sometimes, you know, in the case of nightclubs, you know, people who are drunk um, and, you know, they'll be, they'll have, practices and procedures in place to be able to to manage that it still won't be easy still challenging we would rather it wasn't there as an extra burden you know it's an extra challenge that the businesses don't need but it's not as if they're unfamiliar with having to impose uh, rules on on customers or you know prospective customers um so you know and I, I suppose what we your businesses to do is to come to people like me and Murdo or your local MSP and make representations that you repeatedly get over and above the normal kind of protest and abuse as a result of that and we can use that as evidence to make our case in, in Parliament but um, I don't want to overstate um, how helpless organisations circumstances you can uh, take action to manage representations to us who've got particular problems. Yes, I am. Yeah, um, I think, I mean, the, the passport certificate is quite different from wearing a mask. Uh, at this point, um, the, the current legislation is not saying anybody that have a kind of um, exemption uh, from either producing your uh, vaccine certificate or the negative test result. So, so if you were, like, as you say, if you go into a nightclub, you you must produce either one of them, isn't it? This, um, unlike the mask, where um, some people, because of their health condition or disability, uh, they can be exempt from wearing a mask. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's a fair um, representation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just I think that sometimes, like you know, people, you know, there's a lot of confusion out there because, especially even the very first question where the person was talking about a vaccine mandate, and then it's good that both of you clarified that as we, there isn't any mandate at this moment in time, but but then when it comes to the vaccine certificate, um, is certain uh, certain businesses have been advised that they must check and uh, uh, either that the person have a, um, a vaccine certificate or a negative uh, lateral flow test and and hopefully no, nobody will be aggressive towards anybody if they simply been asked you know do you have either um, either one of those items I mean part, part of the issue with this is that the rules do keep changing and keeping up with it's pretty hard um, and um, you know, sometimes it seems illogical some of the decisions that are taken um, and that but sometimes we just need to get on with it um, I mean it's our job to try and get consistency between all the different rules and regulations that are applied but at the end of the day we just have to try and make it work and um, whatever comes out so but it is confusing when it constantly changes but you know it takes a wee bit of time to catch up on what the current rules are but people should make those efforts to look because all the information is online about what they should do and as long as people act reasonably we'll get through this okay thank you very much for answering all the questions uh, that came into us there any 
final thing you want to say before just, we... Just, I mean, just, just, just really to reiterate, you know, the point that, you know, it is really important that people get vaccinated. And in particular, people get their booster at the moment, because, uh, you know, as we were saying earlier, you know, Omicron is really worrying and the best protection against it is getting the booster. So I just want to repeat that because it's such an important message. Yeah, absolutely. Is murder on screen yet again? <laughs> the voice of reason as ever. Really. <laughs> <That's what it laughs> <is>. But <laughs> to be honest, I, I think it, it, it's good to see that th this, this, there are some things that all politicians agree on. And I think it's about that uh, very important public health message. Uh, so thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much.